Hey guys, this is the Dutch Ruby Established 2000 here, and today I have a tragic story to tell you that happened exactly three months ago. It all started when I moved in with a new roommate. His name was Lars Archibald. The day I moved in with him, I was trying to find my phone, which was missing. I gave Lars my number to call, but then I remembered the ringer was off for the night. Luckily, I found my phone. It was hiding in a kitchen drawer. After I found my phone, he then started texting me about my sexual orientation. I told him that I don't want to do any sexual activities on the first week we met. After a week of living with Lars under the same roof, I then went to Florida for Christmas vacation for two weeks. On the 2nd of January 2022, I was getting so stressed out about my flight back home because there were so many delays with my flight. Thankfully, my flight wasn't cancelled. Lars texted me, Hey, are we still going to ha have some sexual fun when you get back? I responded, Sometime next week, I need to relax myself after all this stress. I thought he would understand, but apparently Lars was so relentless and impatient that he would reply by saying, Would you care if I sucked you off for two minutes when and you got home? That will help relax you. Knowing that his relentlessness and impatience were only going to bug me even more, I ended up caving in and giving him my consent, albeit it was consent under pressure. I told him that, that before we have some sex, I need to take a shower. He then asked me if he could join me in the shower, and then I decided he could join me. We then had sex, but I set a time limit. Every time I tried to check in on how much time I had left, he kept saying, Fuck the timer. When it went off, I wanted to leave. I told Lars that life's too short for unlimited sex. The day after I got back, I got into the shower with Lars just to rub his back. I only told him that I was going in there to rub his back, but he only texted that to me just so that he could have sex with me again. I knew that I... I should have been skeptical about him. Later, after the shower, Lars asked me if I could suck him off. I said, we have to wait at least one week before we can have sex again. He said, I'm not talking sex. I'm talking me he's sucking you off and making you feel good. I then rudely replied, Sucking me off counts as oral sex. Don't you know anything about sex? Some of my other texts included. Anything which involves either your or my privates, I won't do now. I didn't hate it. You're just an extremely horny sicko who cannot moderate any sexual activities. And don't ask. Just behave yourself. Get some therapy, and if you really want to have sex as often as you want, go find a prostitute. On the 4th of January 2022, I told Lars that we would do more sexual activities in four days' time. But then the day right after, he said, It's been four days. I'm ready for some romance with you. Please, just a little bit. Obviously, it hasn't been four days. I said four days yesterday, which means we have to wait three more days. Knowing that I couldn't take any more of his texts, I decided to block him. I am blocked in three days later. Now comes the really disturbing part. On the 8th of January 2022, I was offered to sleep in Lars's bed at half past one. I wanted to sleep, but he wanted to have sex with me. I told him no, 
but he still decided to do it anyway, but I stopped him. Ten minutes past two, he woke up because he was hungry. I woke up about five minutes earlier, and then I found out he was using a pot that I was reserving for a date we were going to have the following night. I turned off the stove and poured the water out. He didn't react too much. He told me to go back to sleep, and I asked him if he could have something else for a change. I told him that I wasn't going to go back to sleep until he did. He then went back to his bedroom. I decided to follow along. I tried to open the door, and then I asked Lars if he can open the door. I asked politely the first couple of times, but then I started to get angry. I then asked if I could get my phone, which was legitimately in his room. He opened the door, and then I held the door back behind me. He then started hitting me, kicking me, and grabbing me. Thankfully, there was no carnage involved. To get him to stop his aggressive behavior, I restrained him down on the bed. He had his phone in his hand so that he, he could call the police on me, but I took it out of his hand so that he wouldn't be able to. Feeling helpless, he shouted that I couldn't breathe, although oh, I was not leaning down on his chest or kneeling or on his neck. He begged for mercy, and then I let him go. Lars was breathing heavily. I held his shoulder for a while on his back. He then went to the bathroom to catch his breath, and then he exited the bathroom and his bedroom at the same time. I followed along to make sure Lars wasn't bullshitting me about having something different to eat. He then went back to his bedroom to get his earbuds. I followed him to get back my phone, which I have neglected to date. Ache. He, quote, locked, unquote, me in his room by holding the door closed. And I say locked because he was really he holding the door cl Ah, I mentioned that already. Eddie. Sorry if I, 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 I mentioned that already. I should avoid redundancies, but back to the script. Knowing that I am stronger than he is, I pulled the door open. Unbeknownst to me, he called his folks, who, in turn, called the police. I decided to apologize for overreacting a little bit, but that's when Lars told me his folks called the police. I begged Lars to reconsider, but he had no sympathy for me. I gave Lars one last chance to reconsider, but he still declined, so I ran away from home. I lie down on a bench for 10 to 20 minutes, and that is when I realized that knowing that I can't stay away from the police forever, I decided to go back and face the music. When the cops found me, I said to them, At ease, officers. I told them, At Everything that happened then. I didn't go to jail, but I was given a court summons. My court case was due to take place on, on, the on January the 25th, but due to a few things that still need to be organized with my lawyer, it was postponed to March. I later went to the doctor's office to be tested for STDs. I now have been living alone since January the 24th, and am due to have a new roommate in at the end of May. On March the 25th, I went to court so that my lawyer and Lars's lawyer can agree to drop the assault charges. I am currently trying to get back at Lars by pressing sexual misconduct charges against him. So that's the story, whom I thought was going to be a great roommate who shares so much in common with me, ended up being a per pervert. I hope, hope you 
who support earned me after this incident and I hope hope um, to get at everything straightened out. So good so, oh this is the Dutch Ruby established two thousand signing out.